Welcome to plan review. Plan review is one of the most important things you can do before you get to that job site. By looking at your plan, laying out your square dimensions, making sure that you're an ICF user-friendly layout, uh, putting in uh, your bracing layout for when you're gonna put your bracing, uh, all the things that are gonna make that job site go very easy when you get there. When reviewing plans, it is important to do the following. First, determine the square dimensions for your project. Second, evaluate your plans to ensure interior space is not lost if home plans were not originally designed for ICF walls. Third, determine window and door rough opening sizes, window heights, and verify opening locations for minimum wall lengths. Fourth, verify reinforcement requirements for footings and walls. Fifth, mark service penetration sizes and locations, as well as bearing plates, embedments for rim joists, and plate heights. Sixth, identify your alignment system needs and placement. Square dimensions. Ensuring you have a square building begins when reviewing the plan. It's important to check all dimensions and determine square dimensions for your project. The build block installation and technical manual cover several methods in detail for squaring a building. The two most popular methods include the Pythagorean theorem, or the 345 method, and diagonal squaring. There are multiple resources online to check your square dimensions. Use a construction calculator or app that works in feet and inches to make this task simple. Wall placement. ICF walls are thicker than wood frame construction. Make sure to account for this additional wall thickness to ensure no interior space is lost if home plans were not originally designed for ICF. One strategy is to place the inside edge of the ICF block on the inside edge of the framed wall so the growth and the thickness of the wall is moved to the outside, preserving the interior space. This is very important to decide early on. If not, expensive problems can occur. Not compensating for this could prevent a staircase on an outside wall in a basement to be too narrow and not meet code. Additionally, some plumbing locations and venting need to be considered. Opening sizes. Plans not drawn with ICFs in mind may have odd dimensions either in length or height. Often it is more practical to adjust the height of a wall to match the 8 inch half height or 16 inch full height of a build block ICF versus cutting off the top of the block and wasting time and potential space. Cut build block forms are easily integrated into a wall in another location as long as the pieces contain at least one or two webs. Reinforcement requirements. Identify all openings such as windows and doors that are indicated. If possible, place openings on ICF-friendly dimensions to reduce cutting and ensure they have sufficient space for long span lintels for garage doors and large windows. Also, make sure openings are not too close to corners or other openings to ensure the wall maintains sufficient shear strength. Consider adjusting window heights to ensure they fall even with a block course to reduce time and labor if possible. Verify rough opening sizes, anchor bolt spacing, and next level embedments for floor systems or levels above. Verify reinforcement requirements for footings and walls. This includes horizontal steel in footings and walls, including overlaps, cold joint dowels from the footing for the wall, vertical reinforcement in walls, and lintel reinforcements above openings and stirrups. Knowing the soil type and compressive strength, along with the height of any backfill as discussed in the site review video, will assist in determining rebar spacing and type. This may already be specified in the plan. Service penetration. Penetrations are part of any structure design. These may include plumbing, electrical, telecommunication, HVAC, air exhaust, venting, and more. They should also be mapped out in the plans to show where the penetrations will be cut and sleeves placed before pouring concrete. Consult local trades if these locations are not indicated on the plan. Some trades prefer to specify penetration size and location and provide the sleeves themselves. Inspect HVAC and plumbing locations to determine any penetrations and evaluate integrating pipes into the foam portion of the ICF wall. 
Some water closet vents require a pipe with a larger diameter than the ICF foam thickness. These vents must be installed in an interior wall or partition. Bracing and alignment systems. Be aware of the size of your project and recommended bracing and alignment needs to ensure you have an adequate amount of bracing on site. Vertical bracing will be placed every four to six feet. Inside and outside corners are braced on both sides and brace areas of special needs such as windows, doors, bulkheads, short walls, and areas that could be prone to any movement. In conclusion, make sure you do the following when reviewing your plans. Determine your square dimensions. Evaluate all plans to make sure you're not losing interior space if they weren't originally ICF plans. Determine window and door rough opening sizes, window heights, and verify openings and locations for minimum wall lengths. Verify reinforcement requirements for footings and walls. Mark service penetration sizes and locations, as well as bearing plates, embedments for rim joists, and plate heights. Identify alignment system needs and placement. These videos are a companion to the BuildBlock installation and technical manual available for download at buildblock.com or a hard copy for purchase in the My BuildBlock store. For more information about BuildBlock ICFs, visit buildblock.com and visit our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash buildblock.